They have earned their medals. Those members of the services whose deeds of bravery and devotion to duty will never be forgotten in the history books or in our hearts. No honor they receive can be too great, whether they are our own fighting men or those of our allies. Millions will have their reward, even the fire watchers. But there are no medals for the housewives. So today we pay tribute to the women of Britain, the women without medals. This is the story of a soldier's wife, just one woman among the many thousands who waited. For her, it's the greatest day of all. Her man is coming home. As I stood on the platform waiting, my thoughts went back to that September morning in 1939. We were on holiday. And as we strolled past a cottage, we heard that fateful news on the wireless. Two hours ago, the Prime Minister announced that we are at war with Germany. Looking at the flowers in that garden, I thought what a crazy world it was then. After that, it seemed only a few moments and John was in khaki. I remember how brave we pretended to be as we said goodbye. But I don't think we fooled each other for a moment. evening when the children were in bed, I realized how lonely a room can be. His chair, his pipe left on the mantelpiece, just as if he'd be back in a moment. It was those letters of his that kept me going. I read each one again and again until I knew them by heart. How many times I tried to picture where he was from the heading, somewhere in England, and later on, somewhere overseas. Not for worlds would I have told him of the raids we were having, of the awful noise of the endless air battles raging overhead, and of those terrible moments when I hurried to the shelter with the children, trying to make believe it was all a new game, so that they shouldn't be scared. As the days went on, I knew the children must go away soon, very soon. I think only a mother could ever understand the strange emptiness when children have left a house. As I gazed at the cot with the toys strewn all around, I made a decision. A few days later, I hadn't time to dwell on loneliness, working at the factory, feeling that I was doing something to help. And at lunchtime, like the other women, hurrying out to try and get a bit of shopping done. Yes, I grumbled sometimes, but I always felt a little ashamed afterwards, knowing how much more he was having to go through out there. the rations had been bought and the ration book marked up by the shopkeeper there was that other queue to face the queue for the bus to take me home but the worst time of all was blackout shutting myself in with only my thoughts for company I'd keep my mind busy writing to, to him but my news seemed so trivial compared with what he was doing and all the important things went unsaid. Each week, I'd send the children a little parcel, and then I'd settle down to knit him warm things. He could never look after himself. I came to live for those times when I managed to get down to visit the children where they were evacuated, and when I saw how well and happy they looked, 
and how lovely and peaceful the country was. I told myself how selfish I was to want them back with me. and playing, I couldn't help thinking how quickly they were growing up without me, and how I was missing all their little sayings and doings that make up a mother's memories. Everyone was very kind and tried to cheer me up, but when the raids got less, I made up my mind to bring the children back. And then something happened that made me glad they were still away in safety the flying bombs began to come over, first in ones and twos, and then all day long. As soon as one had passed over, you began to breathe again, another would come. And so it went on. invented the word doodlebugs. We laughed and joked about them, just as we laughed at all the other things we had to put up with. But the goods in the shop windows you couldn't buy because the coupons wouldn't run to it. And when you stopped outside the grocers, it was to reckon up the points you had left, instead of the money in your purse. Quite ordinary things became treasures. When a friend managed to get a new kettle, it was something to talk about for days. Every soldier's wife will know how I felt when the telegraph boy came to the door with that wire. My heart seemed to stop beating as I took the envelope, hardly daring to read what was inside. This was the moment I'd been living for. John was coming home. I hurried to the station and stood there waiting and remembering. I suppose it wasn't long, really, but it seemed an age before the train came steaming in, the train that was bringing him back. I looked at the faces of the people as they hurried along the platform, I couldn't see any sign of John. Then suddenly, there he was. It was us two alone. There were so many things I was going to say to him, yet just to hold him again meant more than all of them. 